Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm actually a bit out of breath from using this cheap camp go bush knife to saw myself uh, a walking stick. Now, today I'd like to. <sighs> so many mosquitoes here. I'm actually sitting at a crossing of a, a stream where a wild boar and deer, red deer and roe deer, pass through. And probably lynx, wolf, everything else. But there are a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of flies. And I'm sure I'll come home with a few ticks as well. What I'd like to speak about today is something which will probably be treated with a certain amount of ridicule. But I actually enjoy unusual hypotheses. And these, these three I'm going to give you are definitely unusual. But what's beautiful about them is they can't be proven or disproven. I suppose ultimately they could be proven if they are proven to be true. But try prove that they're wrong. I'm not saying I believe in them, but they're definitely food for thought. They all focus on why we are here. Now humans have some pretty peculiar ideas why we are here, depending on where you were born, what religion you grew up in, your culture, your society. If any of you are fond of the uh, Aboriginal Dream Time, the Australian Aboriginal Dream Time, they do have some very unique ideas on how we were created and why. But then again, the Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Judaism and Islam, you know, seen by the Aztecs, they probably had another extremely unusual idea of why we are here. I'm not saying any of them are wrong or that any of them are right. One of the joys of being a, a subcultural anthropologist. But the three I'm going to give you today, hopefully, will make you think. Maybe not directly about them, but about what we are told in general. So, number one. Humanity was created to produce plastic and extract oil from the earth. Now, one thing we are very, very good at is extracting oil and gas and converting it into plastic objects, plastic material, most of which doesn't degrade, it remains. Now, we see that as a bad thing. We say all man-made materials are bad, nylons, and polystyrenes, polyurethanes rayons, these are bad, man-made materials, but man, us, it's not like we've suddenly been dropped here from out of space. If science is correct, which I'm not saying it is, don't get me wrong, creationists, if science is correct, we're from here anyway. 
We evolved here from little blobs of synthesized sort of chemicals in some primordial soup and then became shrews and then monkeys and then us. So we're from here. So man-made materials basically mean they were made by things that came from the earth. And the materials that we use to create man-made materials, things like oil, are not from outer space. They're again from the earth. So it's something from the earth creating something from the earth from something from the earth. Now, depending on what spin you put on it, for example, you know, I don't like seeing plastic rubbish everywhere. It's disgusting. But from the devil's advocate perspective, maybe that's our point. Maybe that's why we're here, our raison d'etre. Maybe we're supposed to cover the Earth's surface in plastic crap. Maybe the Earth which is, you know, four or five billion years old, seven billion, I, I'm not keeping up with the current concept of it. Maybe it decided in the last few hundred thousand years, which is a tiny, tiny, minuscule fraction of its existence, that it needed chlorophore carbons and uh, plastic. Maybe with the oil extraction and gas extraction, it was, maybe it was like an infection. And the, the earth to renovate itself created humans to extract it and let it ease off a bit. Why it needs plastic and oil and things, I have no idea, but then again, I'm 47 years old, not 5 billion. Maybe it has a different perspective to us. Humans are very uh, anthropocentric. We think everything revolves around humans. The entire universe revolves around humans. We create religions to put ourselves and um, some deity which looks like us at the center. But perhaps, when we look at our bodies being composed of bacteria and viruses, billions of them, each with its own function and its own life cycle, like some psychedelic philosophical trip, perhaps humans, the seven or eight billion of us, are just some bacteria fulfilling a function on a higher body, the earth. And the Earth, in turn, is just one of billions of similar bacterial virus in a, a larger body. And this goes on and on and on ad infinitum. So maybe we evolved with some help from the Earth to create plastics. For some reason, maybe the Earth fancied a change. Maybe it needed it for its own evolution. Or to extract oils and gases because these were causing an annoyance to the planet. And when our job is done, we suffocate ourselves with our own byproducts. And in this way, the Earth not only managed to rid itself of one disease, the disease us it created to get rid of it kills itself off in the process. So next time you see plastic bottles everywhere, think to yourself, maybe the earth actually wants this. I'm not saying it does, don't get me wrong. I think plastic is a ridiculous invention. But there's always a possibility. 
Number two. This is where we get into the realms of the scary and the even more ridiculous. Except it's not that ridiculous because it's actually come up in a few ancient religions. It was their belief also. The Sumerians believed that when the humans were created, we were done so to basically mine gold. I'd say for the gods, but the Sumerians didn't see them as gods. They just saw them as superior sort of alien visitors who came here to mine gold. And that's why we were created. And the Sumerians went into great detail. And the Sumerians, they went into great detail about the genetic experiments the gods performed, the individual gods, trying to mix the DNA with pigs and various other animals until they finally got to us, and about all the horrific abominations they managed to create along the way. Basically, we were a slave race that would self-populate, self-feed, it's like Autumn, like, basically like uh, AI with a genetically modified body to interact with the environment. But I'm not talking about the Sumerians now. No, the second theory is that we were created as a food source. that we were put on this planet, we were genetically modified in what Lloyd Pye uh, described as intervention theory, where something like an ape was given extra DNA or mixed with other DNA to create us so that we would breed and breed and breed and fill this planet with a food source for whatever planned to feed on us. When we read the old religious texts, it doesn't matter which religion you look at, they basically all refer to these visitors from heaven who came and did things like killed a lot of people and told them what to think. But these deities, these gods, eventually left and didn't come back. And so we ended up with the cargo cults that we have today. All the different religious beliefs. But these gods that went away, they left a population that would just keep breeding and breeding and breeding. In fact, we've bred so well, we're now at almost 8 billion people. So, let's imagine when these gods come back along this way from whatever interstellar trip they're on, they have a ready-made food source to harvest. There's an old, uh, I think it was Twilight Zone episode called To Feed Man, which talks about something similar. And these deities perhaps even helped us increase in population. 
If we look at the human population until the beginning of the 20th century, it was pretty much flat line between about one and a half and two billion. And then it went whoop, and it just keep, keeps on going up and up and up and up and up. Hundred years later, we are way beyond the original graph. Almost like we're about to be harvested. We are ripe for harvesting. And when you combine that with all the talk about we will have alien contact and perhaps we're about to become our own episode of To Feed Man. So, according to philosophy number two, we were genetically modified from primitive creatures to create a self-sustaining and self-increasing food source for when whatever created us next passes our galactic neighbourhood. We're sort of like a self-procreating takeaway for the gods. Think about that one. Please subscribe to my channel, watch my videos, and as always, be free.